Hello everyone. So I found a great article on Autoblog that uh, talks about charging a non-Tesla at a supercharger and they describe pretty well how it all went. So they took a Kia EV6 uh, to New York and tried out the Magic Dock supercharger. Now there's only certain superchargers that can charge non-Teslas at the moment and I think the app shows like which one is which. Make sure if you're going to a supercharger that it's compatible with uh, non-Tesla. I don't think there's any in Canada yet. So the first thing you got to do is download the Tesla app, make your account, and put in your credit card information and they noted in this article that Tesla makes that pretty easy with uh, prompts to follow and they said uh, the app was seriously slick and fast app. And then they mentioned because they were there with the Kia EV6 and parking at the supercharger becomes an issue because, uh, uh, and I've mentioned this before, not all EVs have the charge port in the same location, but the Tesla superchargers were designed for Teslas that only have the charge port on the rear driver side of the vehicle. For the Kia EV6, it's on the rear passenger side, which is fine. You, you can reverse into this charger, but then the problem would arise if other Teslas show up and or even other electric vehicles that have the charge port on the same location that the Tesla does, the rear driver side. If the stalls are all full, then the Kia EV6 is going to be using the wrong uh, cord that was not meant for that, that parking stall. So then the Tesla guy would be out of luck because of this mix-up. And this, yeah, is going to be an issue because... There's different charging port locations for different electric vehicles. Like some are on the front of the vehicle. There, it's all over the place. Tesla's new v version four addresses this with a longer cable. So hopefully over time it will become less of an issue. So that was their first issue, parking. But in the picture it shows there's like nobody there. So it wouldn't have been a big deal for them on that day. And they said starting the charging session is pretty simple. You just, once you got have the, the app downloaded, pull up, uh, note, go on your app and note the uh, stall that you're at, which is labeled by number and letter right on the charging uh, stand itself. And there's a big blue button that says unlock adapter, which unlocks the magic dock. And then you can pull out the charging cord with the CCS adapter on the end. And then once you're done charging, you go back to this Tesla app, tap stop charging and you can unplug and put the magic dock back where you found it. But they found with the EV6 that they were only getting a uh, 42 kilowatt charge and they go on to explain that this is because the Kia EV6 uses an 800 volt architecture for their electrical system whereas Tesla uses 400 volt and I'm not an electrical engineer but I guess because of that they, they're only able to get 42 kilowatts from a supercharger that is capable of delivering 250 kilowatts. So they ended up switching from the Tesla supercharger over to, there was an Electrify America charger or close by, and they got 229 kilowatts from that, and which greatly reduced their charge time, as you can see in this picture here. There are many other non-Tesla EVs that used to a 400 volt architecture. You know your vehicle, and if you have a 400 volt architecture you could make good use of the uh, Tesla supercharger network if they're if they have the magic dock again not all Tesla superchargers will have the magic dock that'll make it usable for non Teslas but if you have an 800 volt system then you might want to look for another place to charge like an electric fire America or EVgo location at least at the moment we'll see possibly the, the version 4 maybe this has changed for the version 4 supercharger and they mentioned in the article that they asked Kia about this charging conundrum and received the following return Kia is aware of some issues with the EV6 charging out on Tesla superchargers and is working to resolve the issue so they're aware of the issue that you can use them but it it's not a very fast charge. It's not using the, the charger to its full capability. So it sounds like they're trying to develop a solution for this. So maybe in the future there, there will be a solution. It was noted in the article that the Porsche Taycan is able to charge at 150 kilowatts when plugged into a 400 volt charger like a Tesla supercharger uh, through the use of an optional onboard 150 kilowatt 400 volt DC charger option. So obviously there's technology out there that allows a car like the Porsche Taycan, which is an 800 volt system, you can have an onboard charger that will solve this problem. But it sounds like you're gonna have to carry this extra equipment around to be able to take better advantage of a 400 volt DC charger. And I feel like over time, this is gonna become less of an issue. So you'd have to weigh the options and see how much 
see how much it costs and if you think that's worth it. So yeah, basically their conclusion was if your car can actually fast charge on the supercharger, this is great. But if you have a Kia EV6 like they have or something similar with the 800 volt ar architecture, it's not going to be ideal for you. And you might want to go somewhere else, like I mentioned, like Fire America or EVgo, which at the moment you'd have more more locations. Like, so yeah, I thought that was a cool piece on uh, explaining the experience of uh, charging a non-Tesla at a Tesla supercharger. My name's Evan Bertrand. This is the Evergreen Channel. Thanks for watching.